My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Well, first of all, thank you, Vahid, for having me on your show this morning. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Dave Kaufman. I'm one of 10 in the world master trainers with the DISC model of human behavior. I also am an author of four books, and um, I own a business coaching firm that specializes in helping small business owners find freedom in their business so they can spend more time with their family and friends doing what they love to do. I love this. Not that I mastered it, but I know of it, and I know a lot of other coaches that I don't know if they do it professionally or if they do it for a living, but they know of it and they're students of it, and they utilize it in their business. But can you tell us what DISC is briefly, so if anybody doesn't know, and then just, I don't have any of those books. Am I getting a copy of those books? How, how is that possible? Sure, I'll, I'll send you a book. I'll send you all four of them. J just give me one, and I'll buy the rest on Amazon so I can support all the authors. So just give me one with the signature. I'm cool. But go ahead. What is DISC? Perfect. So DISC is a study of human behavior, and it's important for us to realize that there are four types of personalities out there, and everyone is a unique blend of all four. So I am not just a D, I'm not just an I or an S or a C, I'm a blend of all of them. So the, the D type, when I say the D type, I want you to think of one word, dominant. I want you to think of a dominant, decisive, dogmatic, determined doer. OK, people like Donald Trump would be a good example of a high D type personality They're they, They're so focused on the result that they forget that there's people in between them and the result. And sometimes they can hurt people's feelings. They might make a statement like this. Don't tell me about the labor pains. Just show me the baby. In other words, get it done, make it happen and feelings will grow back. Those are the dominant style people. And then you have the I type, which is a very inspiring, inducing, impressionable, interested in people, sometimes illogical. Uh, these are the life of the party. They love glitter. They love excitement, adventure. These are the what we call the rejuvenators. The D types are the terminators, and the I type is the rejuvenators. People like Dolly Parton would be a good example of a high I type. It's all about fun, adventure, excitement, people. Who's going to see me? Who am I going to see? They might say uh, questions like, hey, enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think about me? <laughs> so these That's are the fun-loving people. And then you have the S type, the supportive type. These are people like they're supportive, steady, stable, sweet, shy. Uh, sometimes they're a sucker. Uh, they're, they're, they, they want to support a decision that is made, not necessarily always make the decision, but to support it. People like Mother Teresa. Um, and so these are the, I love the S type because they're so supportive. They want you to win. They rather you win and them lose rather than you lose and they win. Okay. And then you have the cautious type. When I say cautious, I want you to think uh, when I say C, I want you to think cautious, very cautious, calculating, competent, critical thinking, competent, careful, cognitive. Uh, these are your people like a doctors, your lawyers, your engineers, your dentists, your architects. And it's important for us to realize that every human being has a unique blend of those four, but we have an assessment that can determine what is, you know, in what order you are, what is your predominant and what is your second, third and fourth one. And the way I teach it, it's not just so much that you know who they are, but so that you know how to relate and communicate. And imagine salespeople understanding DISC at one of the highest levels and how they can make an impact in their sales by understanding people. Uh, I tell this story a lot of how I sold $60,000 worth in less than an hour with only six words. And it's by understanding their personality. So sales, leadership, think of leadership. How can you, if you can want to be a better leader, you have to know your people and know how they think and why they think what they think. That is awesome. I mean, I think everybody should know who they are first for themselves and then definitely try to, but do you think like one training is enough for them, for individuals? Because I have read and I study a lot and I don't think, I'm even close to like remotely, you know, like I can pick up a few things here and there, but I think it's like a work in progress. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm the slow type, 
uh, to, to, to learn it, <laughs> if that's yeah, a category. Sure. But yeah, I think exactly. it was fascinating to know who I was. Yeah, yeah. You're exactly right. You can't go to one session and know everything about DISC. I mean, I've been doing this for almost 10 years, and I'm one of 10 in the world master trainers. And every single time I teach this, I learn something new. So that the human uh, personality, the behaviors that surround that are so complex. You cannot take one class. And I would say this, you can't take a hundred classes and know everything there is to know about personalities. So we have like many, many courses and trainings and teachings and things like this. But I will say this, if you come to one of my half day uh, events, you're going to know enough to make a tremendous difference in your sales and your leadership and your marriage uh, in your family, you're going to know enough so that you can adjust and pivot your behaviors uh, so that other people feel valued. See, that's the number one thing. People want to feel valued, and the way that they feel valued is by if they are heard, if they are understood. And so this tool that I have can really help somebody feel like they're understood, which gives you greater influence. I mean, I don't, I don't want to start debating over here, but you know, it's, it's all. But, but here's my question, though: Shouldn't the individual recipient also be understanding that we have an outcome? Maybe that's the way I'm thinking. Maybe it's my challenge, right? But shouldn't everybody understand that just because I didn't make you feel good, it doesn't matter that the end result outweighs that? Or you saying that making somebody feel good on your team? outweighs the the end result like if you don't if if a doctor is sitting at the at a hospital and the nurse wants to make sure that the doctor makes them feel good because there's somebody dying you got two hours to save this person's life the way i speak to you the way i talk the way i behave is the life of someone dying more important or the way i make you feel when you hand me the syringes i don't know okay so you can't change the end result a lot of time, but you can change the journey to the end result. So in a sales situation, you know, obviously the sales is not convincing. Sales is persuading and you want to persuade that person to, uh, to come to his or her own conclusion as to what they need. And how you do that is what makes the difference. If I'm speaking to a high D, or let's just say that I'm speaking to a high C because I'm, that's my lowest one. I'm a high DI type personality. But if I'm selling to a C, I'm going to change the way I naturally speak to the way that person feels valued and to where, because that person is going to want to hear a lot more of uh, what could go wrong. Um, what are the challenges? What is the warranty? How does it work? Uh, what does it do? Rather than a high eye, I would pitch it and, and sell it much more of an interactive and, and take them along on the journey based on their, but the bottom line is, yeah, you have to come to the conclusion and the conclusion is always the same, but it's how you take them along on that journey. How is this different than colors? Uh, well, DISC actually has colors inside of them. I know there's a lot of different uh, versions of colors. So the D is green. Green is the color of money, growth, life, go. Um, and so we, we assign the color. I mean, some of colors, D is like red. So I, I have been, so there's definitely, there's different coloration going on. Somebody Absolutely. needs to come and bring everybody together. and They need to agree that these are the colors we're using. So we got, we got, we got blue, we got yellow. Um, and, and, and I don't know the correlation between disc, but I know disc and I know color. So I, yeah. I know that. I think D is red, but that I, I could be wrong. I got to go back and find out what the correlation is. Here's my question. If they start studying on their own, I think this is very important for business owners and entrepreneurs to understand. Not to get a master's degree in it, but they need to understand because they will be interacting and working and networking with other human beings. So it's always a good set of skills that you need to have. But where do I start? Where do you start on DISC? On DISC. Yeah. Um, so obviously you can go to my website and we have a bunch of assessments there that print out. We have like a six page, a 30 page and a 65 page 
printout. So once you take the assessment, it's online. It'll print out a whole page or 30 pages or 65 pages. Of David, content. what kind of a mindset do I have to be in to take the to take the exam? Because I've taken those and they've come different at different times. So what kind of a mindset do I have to be? And how long does it take? Is it like a, because I have, I've got different weird ones. Yeah. Because I was in a different mindset. Yeah. So the, the mindset that you are in right now is the perfect time to take it. So what I, what, I'm, what I mean by that is don't put yourself in a situation like answering the questions in the assessment. Don't think, well, I was, if I was over here, I would do it that way. And if I was over here, I would do it that way. Do it as you are right now. Cut. Don't put yourself in scenarios. Um, but it is true that if you're under stress, if you're especially under grief, your assessment will come out a little bit different because your your mindset. So you have to have a a very calm. Like it's good to just wake up and take the assessment. But that's a very good question. Yeah, because I got a friend of mine that used to take the test. I want to know what type you're in, and I took it with another guy, and they came. I mean, predominantly it was deep, but it came a little bit different. And I was like, okay, this day I was thinking like this. I had this situation going, running through my mind. And then this time I was driving the car while I was taking the test. So it might have not been the, the same. So I understand. So if you see, it's, you got to be sitting down. You can't have the other exterior things be affecting it. So you got to be taking it. So now I do it. So now I got the assessment. Now I need to go learn it. Yes. Yeah, and it's important too, I want to just mention this, that we recommend taking the assessment no more than two times in your life. The, that's one thing that I don't like about the assessment. The more you take it, the more you can predetermine what the answers are going to turn out to be. And so we say that your first assessment is usually the most correct one. Because I no. literally could take the assessment right now and make it say that I am a high C or a high S, which I'm not because I know what answers produce it. So the more you do it, the more familiarized you become. So we, that's the only downfall of the assessment that I see. And I'm trying to be honest here and say that take it once, maybe twice. I mean, David, my wife could take it for me and she could tell me what type I am. <laughs> <laughs> that, that works too. <laughs> well, take it twice yourself and then have your girlfriend, spouse, your loved one take the second, the third time, and then you'll know exactly. You talk to my wife, she'll tell you exactly what type I am. And that's, that's how it's going to go down. So here's my other question. What is some of the leadership secrets that you could share with entrepreneurs, especially I know it's, it's definitely different times right now we're going through, but I just try not to be the negative part about it all the whole entire situation. But I think there will be a lot of positive outcome that could come out of these crisis like you and i would have probably not had this time if it was during a regular time because you've been busy i've been busy so this is also good for networking and doing all the things but what are some of the leadership skills or secrets that you could share with the audiences yeah so i recently created a graph and i call it the four p's to a thriving business in a downturn and those four p's are protect pivot pounce and push. I'm going to go through really quickly what I mean by all of them. So protecting means, and even outside of this crisis, your business is always need of protection. Assets always have to be protected. So what I mean by that is look at your supply chains. Make sure that those supply chains are open. Look at where you're vulnerable, where, where money is leaking, where you don't really know where it is. So kind of just shore up everything and make sure that things aren't bleeding. That's what I mean by protecting. Uh, protect your team. Start talking with your people, your, your team, your, your vendors, your customers. Really start communicating and letting them know that you're on top of it, you're on it. So protecting your asset, your business is, is number one. Pivot. Um, and I said this from day one since coronavirus happened. And I liken this to a basketball game. And so before COVID-19, we were, we were on, a, on a great stretch. We were, we were running down the court, bouncing the basketball, getting ready to shoot, and it was going to be a three-pointer, and it, the economy was great. And out of nowhere, we were blocked by coronavirus. Here's what most business owners are doing right now. They stopped, they're paralyzed, and they're freezing with the ball in their hand. I've, I've heard so many people say, we're not going to market, we're not going to do anything, we're just going to 
they're paralyzed with fear. And what I don't want you to do is to stay in that position because we know that the opponent is going to eventually come grab the ball and shoot in, in the opposite direction. So what I want you to do is I want you to pivot, change the color, change the course, do something different. Understand this, with COVID-19, your customers are not where they were two months ago. And it's up to us as business owners, as entrepreneurs, to understand that with that impact, our customers move. They're not where they were. They move. And it's up to us to determine how, when, and why they're going to buy from us. And that's pivoting, running over to a different side and shooting from a different angle. You're still in the game, is my point. Just because COVID-19 came in and, and impacted all of us around the world does not mean we're not in the game. So I pivoted by doing some other things like helping people get these loans. Uh, I pivoted by doing more stuff like what I'm doing now. This is the first Instagram live that I'm on. And so I'm pivoting some events online. I'm, I'm pivoting because, I, first of all, I protected my company. I shored up some things. I made sure all of my team was safe, made sure that I wasn't spending money where it didn't have a return. I protected and I pivoted and I'm shooting from a different angle. And then the third one that I want to talk about is pouncing. That's, you could say attacking, but I needed four P. So protect, pivot, and pounce. In other words, take massive action. Don't just dabble. Don't just, don't just walk to the other side, but really pounce and show confidence because that's what customers want is to see confidence in the marketplace and so pound means taking aggressive action on marketing and saying you're the expert in this position whether you're in a roofing contractor whether you're a consultant when whether you're a doctor whether you're a lawyer you need to pounce and say i'm the guy that has or gal who has the answers to what you're looking for and that's what i mean by pouncing by attacking it i study like winners all the time. I love winners. I love to see what makes people win. And here's the deal. What makes people win is taking massive action when? Right now. And, and that's what I mean by pouncing. The fourth P is push. Then you'll get it. If you're consistent, you'll keep it. And so what do I want you to do? I want you to keep pushing with that same aggression in your business. Keep on marketing. A lot of our clients, they told me that if they wouldn't know about COVID-19, they couldn't tell a difference because from day one, I told my customers, protect your company, pivot, pounce, and push. And they went out, they, they, they went out and did a campaign on marketing and they're actually ahead of where they were last year during this time because of these four P's. I agree with that 100%. I mean, I understand that this, the, the, there's going to be, there, there will be definitely be changes. And I know that even for myself, including a lot of the business owners that I know, I think this kind of give them the wake up call that they need to stop wasting money and wake up and be more efficient. If anything, that's going to come out of this that I think is going to be fantastic is a lot of businesses, they cut the fat out. Now they're just dealing with the juice. A lot of stuff that they didn't need that they thought that they need to operate their business, they don't need it. Like it's crazy how many, so many of my friends in Los Angeles are no longer going to renew their lease for their location because they thought yep. they need it. They actually don't need it. They're going to do online. They're going to do this. And if they need it, they're going to get a reward. I mean, a lot of other avenues versus having that three thousand dollar rent having every single month because that's three thousand dollars that they could be advertising not to save the money just spending it differently now they can get out of that lease much you know earlier and better but i understand that the, my last question for you what's the difference between a mentor and coach and why do you need it so i think a mentor is so on a um on a just uh whenever you need it type of a um, situation a lot of times it's an agreement um, and I have mentors I have people that that give me this advice because they've been down that road before a coach is somebody that has a little bit more control 
into what you do and a coach's job is to bring out the potential. Um, there's, there's a lot. Well, I'm not going to take business coaching from a guy that hasn't built what I already have. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think Michael Jordan's coach, and by the way, he had eight coaches at the peak of his game, not one, not two, but eight coaches at his very peak. Do you think coach was a better basketball player than Michael Jordan? No, he wasn't. And so the point of behind a coach is a coach specializes in one or two things and, and helps draw out of a person. A mentor is there, someone there that is just, you know, hey, I would do this, I wouldn't do that, I would advise you to do this. Uh, both of them are good. I think every business owner should have a mentor or, and a coach. Uh, I can tell you that I would not be where I am today without some tremendous people speaking to my life, people like Zig Ziglar, people like Tom Ziglar, people like John Maxwell, people like Hunter Partridge, people like John, uh, Ron Klein, the inventor of the magnetic strip on the credit card. Uh, some amazing people in my life. We lost you there for a second. We got you. They got it, love it. Yeah, I think we got, can you hear me? Push the volume on your phone, maybe that fixes it. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. I can't. It's okay, hold on. Let me end it and I'm going to request you again. One sec. Move David. Let me see. Give me a second, you guys. Let me send the request to David one more time. Get the final remarks. David, I just sent you a request again. There we go. I yeah, can you hear me now or no? Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden we just um we could, I could see you talking but I couldn't hear you talking. Yeah, all right. There's definitely a delay. We'll, we'll just change the connection later on. We got it. But David, give me the, before I let you go, give me the name of your, well, one of your favorite books that you've written. People have it on the, on, at least on the audio. So one of the best books that I've written is, I don't know if you There we go. Yeah, we still can't for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, David, we can't hear you. All right, you guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna get David to give us the name of the book so we'll have it on the image on the video. But I think we lost David. It's cool. We got you. David, let me try one more time. Let me remove him. And I'm gonna bring him back again one second. Let me send a request. I saw the book cover, but let's see if we can get the rest. Yeah, for some reason, we lost you, David. Yeah, we're yeah still I'm not ahead. sure where, but uh, this is the book that I would recommend you getting, Freedom to Succeed. Freedom to Succeed. I got it, David. Freedom to me? Succeed. I can hear you now. Freedom to Succeed, but there is a delay but freedom to succeed. David, yeah. thank you so much for taking this time and being with us. We'll definitely do more. We, we got a lot more to do. So you and I are going to be in contact. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day being with us. Thank you so much for having me, having me on your show. I really appreciate it. You got it. You got it. Talk to you soon.